I am a PhD student at ECE department, Indian Institute of Science. I work under Professor Chandra Murthy, Signal Processing for Communication Lab. I have also received prestigious Prime Minister Research Fellowship in 2019. My research work is broadly on wireless communication systems, the physical layer design and optimization. Let me explain my research work in few slides. Here is a cartoon diagram of a cellular system. So we have two cells, hexagonal cells, and we have two base stations, and there are some users. Now, you can notice from these uh, red lines is that if a user is very near to the base station, the signal strength is very high. But what happens is that as you go away from the base station, the signal strength decreases. And what happens in cellular systems is that quality of service is not uniform. If you are near to a base station, you get a very high data rate. But if you are away from the base station, you get a very low data rate. So what my work is based on something called cell-free massive MIMO, which I will explain in the next slide. Cell-free system, rather than having a massive base station with lots of antennas, at the cell center, we have lot of access points with smaller number of antennas. So what happens is that a user always finds one nearby access point and that access point or a subset of access point nearby to a user can serve that user equipment. That's why the quality of service is better in a cell-free system. Now let's look at this diagram. So these are the access point and suppose this is one area and this is one user. So this user can be served by two base stations. So a user always finds a base station or a subset of base stations in its vicinity. Now these base stations or access points are connected to a central processing unit. This central processing unit helps in processing the data from the users. So in a cell-free system, we can combat the path loss and shadowing because the users and APs are in close vicinity. We have better coverage, we have better rate, which we call spectral efficiency. And we also have better interference management because we have a central processing unit that has the global knowledge of the transmitter and the received data symbols. There is another technology which is very famous and it's called full duplex. So what full duplex does is that suppose I have two antennas. In a full duplex system, one antenna can receive and another antenna can transmit and it can happen simultaneously. So ideally full duplex system doubles the system capacity compared to a hub duplex system where you have you can only transmit or you can receive but there is a catch if you look at this picture suppose this base station is full duplex it can receive from one user it can transmit to another user but the transmitted signal also contaminates the received signal which is called self interference now it has been uh, shown uh, theoretically and also experimentally if the self-interference is not cancelled substantially, the doubling of capacity does not happen. And it can so happen that the performance of full duplex system is even worse compared to the hub duplex system. So in my research, we propose one system model where we can have full duplex capability but with hub duplex access points. How do we do it? We take the cell-free system, which I have explained before, and there is something called dynamic time division duplexing. What is dynamic time division duplexing? In dynamic time division duplexing, APs are still have duplex, but one AP can be in uplink and another AP can be operating in downlink mode. So we marry these two technology to get a virtual full duplex system. I will explain it in the next slide. So, in dynamic DDD enabled cell free, which I call virtual full duplex, we have lots of users. So, the green users are uplink users, red users are downlink users. Now, we have lot of hub duplex access points, but one access point can be uplink, another access point can be downlink. Now, my problem is that to find what is the optimal configurations of this uplink and downlink access point. What I mean is that Suppose consider this access point. There are a lot of red means downlink users around this access point. So it's it will be beneficial in terms of the achievable rate that if I make this access point downlink and suppose this access point uplink because there are uplink users near to it. My, my research investigates 
how do we schedule this access points in uplink and downlink so that the sum uplink and downlink rate is maximized for all the users. So let me show the performance of our proposed system compared to the existing cellular systems. So this curve explains the achievable sum spectral efficiency and the, uh, the circled three curves are the sum spectral efficiency achieved by dynamic TDD enabled cell free system and these three curves are for the full duplex cellular system. We can readily see that for all values of data SNR, our proposed systems perform better than the existing solutions. That I have done with my supervisor are available in IEEE Explore. One can go and browse and get a feel for the works that has been done and how well our proposed solutions compare with the existing literature. I want to thank my supervisor. Our lab culture is very vibrant. We have a lot of members and we work on a very broad area. We work on signal processing, we work on wireless communication, we work even on information theory. So this is just a glimpse of our lab. If anyone is interested, they can go to this link and browse through all the publications and all the research areas. Apart from research, the life at ISC is very colorful. It's not that all the students are always doing research. Of course, that is the main part. But we have a lot of cultural and social and sport activities. Students can participate in those. And there are a lot of clubs where we can join and we can uh, enhance our uh, uh, soft skills. ISC, there are a lot of other facilities as such, we have a very good library. Our department has a library and our department has a lot of uh, cutting edge equipments, which we need all the time for research. This makes our EC department is a very good choice uh, for uh, pursuing research. Those who want to pursue research uh, in the future is EC department is a very good venue for that. One reason is that there are there is a varied uh, that there, there, there are a lot of topics on which you can do your research. It's not restricted to suppose communication or signal processing. There is even robotics, AI. All these uh, cutting edge technologies are being explored. We have amazing amazing facilities. We have a department library. We have a tremendous amount of resource in terms of simulating and in terms of doing some practical experiments. The faculty strength of EC is also very good. Also in department, we get opportunity to talk with many faculties from outside India. They come and give talk and, and we interact with that, them. And this also gives us opportunity to go outside and study further. So EC is the best place for that. We, we kind of, uh, we, we connect with the entire world and we, are, we keep ourselves updated the recent research being done on signal processing communication, RF and photonics and all these departments.